Lee family. Ladies and gentlemen, you're still tuned in to the biggest, the baddest, gives you the most hip and happening show in the motherland. Make sure you do hop on our socials and let us know how much you are loving and feeling the show. It is a let's go live on Twitter as well as Xair underscore CTV on Instagram as well as Xair live on Facebook. Please don't ask us why we keep changing Facebook accounts because darling, I don't know. But what you need to do though is hop on our new one and make sure that you show us all the love. One thing that I absolutely love about the show is that we get to chill with really incredible, cool people who are telling us their real life stories that are out there right now trying to change the world. And this next person is absolutely no different. She is a breast cancer survivor, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you know anything about breast cancer, you know that it can be very fatal. So to survive such an incre such a big thing is, is a huge, huge thing. And that's why I want to talk to her today about actually how women like us who have never had breast cancer can maybe find out in the early stages and hopefully cause some sort of prevention. But right now, though, we're going to be chatting to her, finding out all things that have to do with breast cancer. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, Please help me welcome Reno Finway. I literally Thank always do that, and it was like, God, there's no crowd. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I did mention something very big in my first statement is that you're a breast cancer survivor. Yes. How I does am. that feel? It's good. It feels good. Um, but mostly because the journey itself and like what I've learned actually yeah. made it like, yeah, extremely worth it. And I mean, most women like myself, I actually, which is bad, but I've never actually been for a test or anything like that, just as a regular checkup, because I don't think you know, a young woman especially think, oh, it's going to be part of my story. So yeah. how did you actually found, find out and, and did you catch it early? Yeah. Well, I'm just like you. I've never had to go for a test, yeah. but like how it happened or what, how I knew was I was walking back home. It was simply walking back from the shops yeah. and I had like a sharp pain in my breast. Yeah. And I actually just thought like my. I was like it's really painful I just felt like a little a bit of a lump or like a hardness and I was yeah. like okay that's weird yeah which I found strange because I was like I mean I probably bath I bath every day so I, sh I should <laughs> I have felt have. this exactly where did it come from yeah. but um yeah so then I went to actually go have it checked out I went to Discam right. so they actually um do breast screenings for free mm. and from there they confirmed that there was a mass and then through that I actually had to go through like the clinic. I went to Kutuski in Cape Town yeah. and I got that tested. Um, it has its own story, but like I had that as well. Yeah. So, yeah. But also, as a young woman, I mean, you are young. How does it feel to have that diagnosis? Like, you're in the dark and you're thinking, ah, oh, man, they're probably going to tell me, like, I have a little thing, I must take painkillers and then it will go away. So, how do you feel when you've got the initial reaction that, hey, actually, this might be a problem? You are my initial reaction. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird well, because cool. <laughs> I was like, um, so actually to, to actually tell the story, which I think is quite important for women and other people to know. Mm. So when I got tested, they do two tests. They do right. like a blood test and they do like a tissue sampling where they actually take sampling from the breast. Yeah. The blood test said that I, it wasn't cancerous. Okay. So it said that it was just probably like a fibroid. And it's only when the pain persisted and I was like, okay, but like, I know my body. I don't understand why I'm going through this. Yeah. That I then went to like go privately to get tested. Mm. But like it just that idea that you could get tested and it could actually be like a misdiagnosis. Yeah. So actually going for like a second like test or second opinion. Mm. But for me, like when I actually was told, I was like, Okay, I need to do my hair before like my hair falls off. Like literally, I was Girl. like, oh my gosh, like I can't go to the hospital with my hair like this. And I was like, okay, but that means I get to be off work. I'm so happy. I need rest. Rest, my fair I was rest. Like, rest. Rest. I need rest. <laughs> but, yeah, I think um, my outlook in general of yeah. things is I, I don't I can't stress about things that are out of my control. Mm. And it it seems foreign. Like it's such a foreign concept. Yeah. It's like okay, there's a lump, but what is like okay what so it was like mean? okay until i actually go through like go to the doctor and mm. get told you're gonna do chemo and this and that it was like okay it's a it's a lump let's yeah. let's take it let's be rational and then i'll actually hear what the next steps are right. so i was very like everyone around me was like ah, i was like oh, okay. actually that's what i wanted to find out like how important is it for you to have people around you that are surrounding you because you spoke about how it's an experience like it's a whole experience mm. it's not a one-off thing but you like there's a journey there so how important is it for people to have those that they love surrounding them, caring for them in that time? 
that is super super important mm. i think that because we're so different in how we respond to things yeah. some people fall into depression and feel like it's the end of the world Absolutely. because of like what social media what tv represents or like presents um cancer to be it's like it's a deadly thing you're gonna die stage four you Literally. know whereas it's like it's really not that like we're really misinformed so i think it's it's really important because those people are your anchor they're there even if you're the strong friend the strong person yeah. but it's like you don't always have to be strong so mm. for me that was my anchor like people being there and knowing that i don't always have to be strong oh, that, and that's so beautiful because yeah. you don't always have to be strong another thing i want to talk about is actually what keeps you what keeps you going like how was the experience do you feel like the experience again never want to say bad things happen for good reasons but do you feel like any good came out of that experience do you learn something about yourself do you learn something about your body um mm. has there been a positive thing that came out of what you had through breast cancer i think that you learn so much about yourself mm -hmm. like you you rediscover what your hope really is you really think about like did i really want to do this job could i really do more mm -hmm. have i done the things that i wanted to you mm -hmm. know so your outlook kind of changes and that depends on you do you yeah. feel like i have this much time left i need to do this or like this i could do much more with my life and right. if i do survive let me take things differently so for me i learned firstly that cancer wasn't my story right. like it was just a part of it oh. but it wasn't like I have cancer. It's like, oh, okay, it's the same as having flu or having, but I'm going through it and I'll overcome. Mm. And um, I'm, positive things happen because life continues. I mean, I got engaged, I got married. Oh, come on, somebody. Like, you know, <laughs> on, you know, I'm just Daddy. saying. <laughs> but like in that moment, you don't, like just the thought that like, why would you plan your life because you might like die or, mm. but it's like, no, continue with life and you know, so yeah. And then now, I mean, Strawberry Lips is doing something incredible and they have a new campaign um, titled um, Pink Diaries. Yeah. And what is that all about? I know they're spreading awareness, but why did you feel like it was important that you jumped on and you were also part of that incredible campaign? I think, firstly, two reasons. Like, one, to kind of represent young people mm. who have gone through this. Like you said, like, I'm very young and I've gone through this. Yeah. Even at the hospital, like, the one person was like, Oh, you have it because they're so used to people over 40 or yeah. women over 40. Yeah. And secondly, to be a representation of an African woman going mm -hmm. through it because, um, I mean, I know Glamour also like jumped in on it, but it was like, I need my people, I need someone at home to be like, yo, this is a thing. And yeah. actually, I must get checked out and mm -hmm. I must actually be the voice even for them because I think like one thing I always say is like with black people like I'm sure you have a parent or an aunt who's like this you could have a headache for weeks it's and they're like just drink, drink water come. yeah drink water. Just drink water but like being in tune with your body and realizing that if you get checked out early because like especially in like in our community like mm. we don't have we don't all have medical aid Ex we don't know so if we're aware and we're able to be in tune with our bodies and actually have that awareness it it can help for it to be detected early yeah then it doesn't have to be that grim you will die yeah. because it was checked out early so i think it was very important for me to also be a part of that right and and what are some of the things i mean are you going to be joining this campaign what are some of the things and you're going to be telling your story so what is the one thing that you feel like you would like our people to take away from your story i think it's that you don't have to do it alone mm. firstly because yeah. i think you feel so overwhelmed and it's your burden because it's literally a emotional financial all around yeah so you kind of feel like oh, i don't want to burden this person but secondly to realize that like you did nothing wrong because mm. i actually thought like when you hear about it i thought maybe it wasn't eating right maybe i should have done this maybe i should have done that but mm. really that you can overcome it if you have a positive mindset but actually not having that mindset of like ignorance but yeah. actually be aware of your body be in tune with it and when there's something wrong it's better to actually pay that 450 consultation now then to pay like thousands later because now yeah. you actually didn't get tested yeah i mean this is so beautiful yeah. firstly shout out to you for beating cancer guys thank you it thank is possible yeah, i think that's is. the one thing that we can take away because like you said before when you have cancer people automatically think okay cool i'm gonna die i have five years if not less but you can actually see people like Luna Filo are beating cancer and they're doing incredible things. And that's why what Pink Diaries is doing is making sure that all women in South Africa know the importance of getting yourself checked out. And we're going to be speaking to some other people from Pink Diaries a little later on. Right now, though, we're going to take a little bit of a short break. Before I let you go, where can people hop on your social media and show you some love? Okay, I'm on Instagram. I'm Rumufilo KM. So it's my full name, KM. Yeah. I am on Facebook, Rumufilo Mutabi Lichalaba. Yeah as well as YouTube, Rumofilo KM. 
all right thanks doll now i want to send you guys on a break while you're on that break please do hop on our socials so all the love and actually just say shout out to her for beating cancer okay but right now though we're going to take a little bit of a short break and we will see you after this ctv family catch